Today, we will find out what almost the most budget processor is capable of, namely Intel Core i3 for socket 1700 if it is given good conditions. For example, give it a motherboard that can overclock non-K processors and a good overclocked DDR5 RAM, and we test the stock and overclocked version in games. And we also compare this $100 i3 with the most powerful i9-14900K for $600. And looking ahead, I was very surprised by the result. You may ask, how am I going to overclock this budget i3 if it does not have the letter K in its name, which should mean that the CPU is unlocked for overclocking. Well, today you'll learn everything you need to know about overclocking locked processors on a 1700 socket. First of all, and this is almost the main condition, a motherboard that can overclock a non-K CPU. And also, not all locked processors can be overclocked, and only the 12th generation Intel seems to have closed this possibility for the 13th and 14th generation CPU. As I think for the reason that no one will buy processors with the letter K and motherboards with the Z chipset, but I have a motherboard with both a Z chipset and possibility of overclocking non-K CPU. ASRock Z690 Taichi. This is not the most budget motherboard with overclocking capability. There are boards that are cheaper. Now, I'll show you what exactly gives it the ability to accelerate everything that moves and everything that doesn't move to move and accelerate. Oh, I screwed up the wrong compartment. You'll forgive me, an old fart for that. Here, there's a special chip soldered under the SSD. This is the so-called external clock generator BCLK. And what's more interesting, this chip is installed even on B chipset motherboards, i.e. boards with a B chipset. Thanks to that, the chip can overclock absolutely the entire line of 12th generation CPU, even with K and non-K. Here are the names of those motherboards that have this chip. If I'm not too lazy, I'll leave a partner link on AliExpress with such boards for several more or less budget options, just on AliExpress. There's not a bad AS ROG motherboard, which is aimed exclusively at the Chinese market, and which, by the way, has DDR4 memory slots. And of course, I did not forget to say that for fierce overclocking, a regular box cooler will not be enough for you. Although on a box cooler, I took a frequency of 4.9 GHz, but on such a cooler, the temperatures were below 100 degrees and the fan was spinning like two Jay-Z with a turbo kit at 600 horsepower. Even from the fact that I was banally driving the mouse on the desktop, so, for overclocking, I have there is such a radiator cooling from the Anli, which, by the way, is more expensive than the processor itself, but that's not important. For me, the main thing is the result at any cost. Okay, now overclocking. In the BIOS, when you put a non-K processor, an additional non-K CPU overclocking item appears. It needs to be turned on. Now, I won't torture you for a long time with how to overclock it correctly. Here, you just need to set the BCLK frequency to 129. And now we have a processor frequency of 5.3 gigahertz. Well, almost 5.3. As you can see, we set the CPU cache ratio a little less because this is too much. And as you can see, our DDR5 frequency has also increased quite a bit. This is because overclocking on the BCLK bus overclocks everything together. So you also need to set the DDR frequency to manual. I already have 5950 megahertz memory overclocked. If you have the same modules as mine, you can steal these timing numbers from me and probably in 90% of the time it'll be stable for you. I then set the voltage to 1.47 volts on the CPU. Well, this is what we have now. In CPU Z, our CPU scores 4000 points in multi-threading and almost 800 points in single threading. Here are the numbers of the completely stock version, and I consider this a pretty significant result. <laughs> In Cinebench, our processor overtakes the notebook 8-core i9. At the same time in load power consumption, reaches 110 watts. The stock version consumes only 40 watts in the video rendering in Sony Vegas. The overclocked i3 on its powerful 4 cores and on 8 threads caught up with the 18 cores 36 threads Xeon, which is absolute madness considering that the i3 has only 4 cores. And i9 in this task is only 2 times faster than an overclocked i3. Now, let's look at the real performance in games. On the left, we have full stock. Even the memory works in stock at 4400. In the center is overclocked memory with tight timings. And on the right is full CPU and memory overclocking. Even I opened the door. And as you can see, even from overclocking the memory, we have a good result. Plus 10 FPS is not bad. But from complex overclocking, our i3 jumps into a completely different weight category. 
I'll tell you that with such overclocking, the budget i3 destroys everything it sees, even Ryzen 5 5000. Although I don't have them, but it is the same and in some places even higher FPS produced by that CPU. The difference in performance between full stock and full overclocking sometimes reaches 50%. Now, I propose to compare our overclocked i3 with the top i9 and with the infamous 18 core Xeon from my previous video which for some reason you haven't watched yet although I tried so hard that I almost broke my back. Okay, here we have it, a plague tale. On the left, Xeon. In the center, charged i3. And on the right, i9 on charged memory. Wow. You look at what a charged i3 produces. Comparing i3 with Xeon, the first tears the second like a dog. And the i9 rests because it has loaded the graphics card. Alan Wake 2. The i3 is so powerful that it loads the graphics card at 100%, thanks to which the i9 I didn't even add it to the tests, which gave me and i9 a break. The difference between these budget candidates is up to two times in favor of the i3. Cyberpunk. Well, here you can clearly see the difference between the CPU and how much more powerful the i9 is than the i3. I'm not very good at math, but even without this, I can see that i3 beats Xeon by 70 to 80 percent. That is, I think you understood that the FPS is 70 to 80 percent higher in i3 compared to i9. Our budget i3 lags behind by somewhere like 50 to 60 percent. Starfield! Well, it's completely broken. Xeon's not suitable for this game at all. At that time, the i3 works wonders and produces two times more FPS, and i9 has an emphasis on GPU. Witcher, the i3 is just as crazy as it can be, but the i9 is not because the graphics card is weak. I almost forgot Minecraft on the left, Java on the right, Bedrock. This is the FPS you will get on an overclocked i3. On a stock non-overclocked one, subtract 50%. Now let's talk about the expediency of such a solution for games. I think that this option is suitable only for enthusiasts who like to poke around in the BIOS and pull out the hair on their ass for hours configuring and testing everything. It'd be more appropriate to buy a CPU with more cores and at the same time buy a cheaper motherboard and cooling system. Of course, I made this video more for fun and to understand what a budget processor is capable of if you give it good conditions. I wanted to assemble a similar but more budget PC with the possibility of overclocking the 12th generation of all processors, then I would choose the same motherboard from ASRock aimed at the Chinese market, ASRock B660M PG Riptide on cheap DDR4 memory with an i5-12400 processor. It already has 6 cores, 12 threads, that's quite enough for modern games, and if it is also properly overclocked, by the way, it takes 4.9 GHz from almost everyone then it'll be almost like 13,600K in games. At the same time, you'll not need such a huge cooling for overclocking, so the last 300 megahertz have a very strong effect on the change in CPU voltage, and accordingly, on CPU heating, as I already said, I used 4.9 gigahertz on the box cooler while the temperatures were high, but there was no overheating and throttling. I'll not show it because I'm too lazy to tear off the water cooling plate from the back of the motherboard and remove the board from the case. Moreover, this plate sits very firmly. In short, if the box cooler almost coped with overclocking, then some tower cooler will cope even more. As you can see, even an i3 on a cool motherboard and normal memory turns into a cool game processor that destroys everything it sees and is able to fully load any modern gaming graphics card. Although, as an upgrade option, this option is also suitable. Plus, in some online games, this i3 has even more FPS than the i9. Although, if you turn off all the cores on the i9 and leave only four, the FPS on the i9 will be even higher. But people with 46 chromosomes do this, they will not. Subscribe and see you soon.